Hey guys, welcome back. It's Ollie from Flight Comp, and we're continuing the uh, CCM 2 meter glider build with the flap servo installation. So you can see I have the ailerons done already, and we used L bends over there. And on the flaps, we're going to use, I decided to use the same X08 Plus servos. And instead of the L-bends, we're going to use clevises on both ends of the linkage because we can use a slightly bigger arm because the wing is a little thicker and we need a little more travel on the downstroke for the flaps. I've done one servo up already right here. I'm using the single-sided KST arm and I'm using the second hole out right there. First hole, second hole. I've already trimmed this arm up and drilled a uh, 1.6 or about 16th inch uh, hole with a drill bit through that second hole. And again, if we look at this clevis here, I have ground down the back side to get clearance for the up travel on the uh, upstroke of the flap so we can get the flap the aileron mixing working properly and again we're using the RC Solutions frames have this servo already mounted in the frame with some plastic underneath it as usual so I'm just gonna get the uh, second servo looking exactly like this one and then we can move on to getting a piece of two millimeter threaded linkage here the other clevis and seeing if we have to recess the other clevis over here or uh, clearance I should say the other clevis to get up travel in the flap but we'll see how it goes maybe we won't have to so I have both the flap servos set up here um, I had to make some reliefs to the clevis that hooks onto the uh, control horn at the flap. Um, this is a relief that I ground down on both sides of this clevis. Um, and that is for... That is for this edge right here. When the flap is fully down, the bottom of the clevis uh, hit this edge uh, very slightly. I could probably get about 60 degrees down travel um, without modifying the clevis, but putting those reliefs in the clevis, I can get now about 80 degrees, which is plenty for a model like this. And then also, I did grind down the other side the top edge here again to give it relief um, so it doesn't hit the top of the shroud right here so we can get enough up throw in the, the flap for flap to aileron mixing and again I have put a very slight down bend on this edge this side of the linkage and my linkage is uh, 35 millimeters long. These are RC Metal Bits linkages. Um, I put a link in the description below. So with this setup, we are going to be able to get the proper movement out of our control surface. And now I have to actually get these uh, glued into the wing. Okay, the servos are now glued in, the flap servos. So there's the X08H+. Plus. All the linkages are hooked up. Um, I glued the servos in at full flap deflection. So I had tape holding the flaps in their full down position while the epoxy on the um, servo frame cured. And I matched the down on um, both wings so they have the same amount of down deflection and I'll just show you this is what I'm getting here 
it's about, I don't know, something between 70 and 80 degrees of down, which I think is plenty for this kind of airplane. And then on the upside, we're not getting a whole lot. You can see there, that's probably, I would say six millimeters, about six millimeters of up travel. Um, that's all I could get. That's all I could manage with these horns. Um, of course, you could use a slightly bigger horn, but then it would stick up past the skin, and you'd have to use a uh, servo cover with a blister in it, but I think we're going to be okay here. Actually, I think this is going to rub the bottom of the uh, servo cover. So this horn here that I used, it sticks up a little bit um, past this part of the skin, but the actual surface, it's flush with it. So I might have to do some work on the servo cover to get it to fit without rubbing. Um, if it rubs a little bit, it's it's no big deal at all. But yeah, this these are the uh, throws I'm getting on both wings, and we're using all of the available travel on the servo. So the next thing to do is to hook up the wires to the harness and then install the covers over the flap servos. All right, so I have the uh, servo covers here, and I actually had to cut a hole. I don't know if you can see that right there. To clear the arm. See, it barely rubs the bottom of the um, servo cover. Actually, the arm is still underneath, completely underneath the cover. It just hit the bottom side uh, a little bit, and so I cut a relief hole and just put a piece of clear tape over that on the top. So basically, there is another maybe half millimeter of clearance for the servo. And then I'm going to um, fix these in place with the uh, typical canopy glue that I use here. I've already put this one in place, and I just have some masking tape holding it down. This will take basically overnight to cure. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one, and that will wrap up the uh, flap servo installation. All right, real quick, um, now that I have the uh, the glider basically completed, um, there's no receiver or battery in here, but I did put um, some lead weight to simulate uh, those components, and I, I used 107 grams of lead to get the CG to 85 millimeters, which is the starting CG they recommend, 85 to 90 millimeters from the leading edge back. And we have a all-up weight right now of 820 grams. So, again, this is a pretty light model. Um, this is the standard or light version of the of the uh, sailplane. And then there's, a uh, I think, a double carbon version, which I haven't got my hands on yet, but we have some coming. Um, so, yeah, so you need, uh, you know, you'll have your rece receiver here, and then you'll probably need... You just keep in mind you need a battery that's uh, probably around uh, 90 grams or something like that. Or, you know, lead and the battery. So I think actually like the bigger 18650 packs are over 100 grams. So keep that in mind. You'll probably be way too nose heavy if you put a battery like that in here, even though it might fit. So I think a better option would be a 2S like uh, 800 LiPo, 700 LiPo. A 2S uh, uh, life pack in the 800 milliamp range, some something like that. Um, but yeah, she's finished. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of packing tape on the wing roots to protect the wings from um, the, the tape, from taping the wings on and off to keep the goop off the, the wings. And then one more thing I want to just have a quick look at was the uh, tail cone. So the tail cone fits really nicely. Um, here it is right here. Um, it's not like a snap fit or anything, but it does fit nicely, and you will have to use some tape uh, after you install your V-tails to keep it on. Um, one thing I did was I took a heat gun and actually heated up 
this edge slightly and pushed it down just a little bit. And I also heated up these two sides and squeezed in slightly and just held it there till it kind of held its shape. And that just makes it a much more snug fit and it's not as loose, but overall it fits really well. Again, once you put your V-tails on, you just use some tape to hold this in place. So this model is basically done. I'm gonna uh, hand it off to my customer and then it'll be up to him to put a receiver and battery in it and program it. But I uh, hope you guys found some of the information in this build series helpful. And I will see you all in the next one.